and our next guest, Zach Shrewsbury, who joins us via telephone. Zach, good morning. Thank you for being with us. Hey, thank you for having me back on. It's a pleasure, sir. I think it's been a few months since we've last spoken with you. And uh, in a race now where you've got uh, three Democrats vying for this, Don Blankenship recently uh, joined uh, the uh, the race uh, as well a couple months ago. He was, I believe, the third person in on the Democrat side. Uh, Zach, refresh our audience members with your background. I know you've done a lot in a short period of time. Tell us about yourself. Sure. So uh, native West Virginian, born in Ripley, Jackson County. Went to high school in Monroe County. Uh, did a semester of college. Realized I couldn't afford it. So what do you do at 18? I joined the military. So I joined the Marine Corps. Did two and a half years in a fleet anti-terrorism security team, two and a half years in the infantry. I got out as a sergeant, became a father while I was in. I got involved in politics some across the country, but eventually I came back to West Virginia to take care of my grandmother. She had fallen ill. Um, I didn't like what I saw when I got back here. I saw addiction crisis, poverty, people hurting across the board. So I dived into community organizing and activism that looks like I was feeding the homeless in southern West Virginia. I was giving wet warming layers for them and food. Um, delivering clean water to communities that have water. And it take, it take me across the state really much. I'm um, just trying to fight for communities, wondering why no one's helping. And across the board, Republicans and Democrats, it all came down to the same thing. People worried about their jobs, uh, putting food in, the, food in the, the table for their kids, and, road, and roads and wages. So that led me into fighting for legislation like the PRO Act. I'm a very big union guy. Um, and frankly, after, after doing that for a few years, I got fed up and uh, – I saw this seat, and I'm like, you know what? I'm running for U.S. Senate. So I threw my hat in the ring, and we've been moving 1,000 miles now ever since. I was the first one to declare back uh, in October 15th of last year, and it's been it's been well-received. We've been to almost every county in the state. Uh, we've talked to unions, uh, talked to different groups, talked to anybody really that wants to talk to me, um, and it's it's just been great. It's been going, it's been great going forward. People are liking the message, and we don't plan on stopping. Zach, our – Voters in the state concerned about your party affiliation and how you might vote Democrat along with the Democratic Majority Leader Chuck Schumer if you get elected. Yeah, not not so much as you you would uh, you would think, honestly. I mean, that that is that is one of the things with this being such a uh, red state, so to speak. But uh, I've been in rooms full of Republicans across uh, the state, and I very much have said before. Um, we probably aren't going to agree on a lot of issues, but we can always come together on some. And I'm not here to uh, politically pander for votes. I'm here to tell you exactly who I am, what I believe. And I will say this, um, out of all the, all the people running, I am right here at your door wondering how I can help your community. We might not agree on a lot of social issues, so to speak, but no one else is going to be here trying to advocate for your family like I am. You know, Just because we disagree doesn't mean I want your, want your family to suffer. And that's resonated across the state i mean you know, I'm, I'm being my genuine self this whole time i've had a lot of republicans come up to me and say they they appreciate they they appreciate the uh, uh the upfrontness they appreciate where i stand and uh the but they, they much rather vote for me in the general than they would uh jim justice yeah they, 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 they like the fact that i'm actually going door to door i'm going to haul i'm going to say you know these functions to ask people what what's needed in their communities are you presuming jim justice will come out the other side of this you know, I, I still do. I know Mooney's actually uh, closing closing the gap, and I'll I'll say he's that that's pretty impressive. He's closing the gap uh, quickly, but I, I still don't think um, I don't think he can pull ahead of Jim Justice. No, I'll be I'll be surprised if he does. But I'll, I'll give it to him. He is closing that gap, from what I can tell from I think the most recent polling I, I learned about. Differentiate yourself between your opponents, Glenn Elliott and Don Blankenship. Sure. So for myself, I am more of a, a populist candidate. I don't really, I'm not really with the establishment on on much. Uh, I'm doing my own rule book here. You know, um, I come from, I come from the hills and hollers, like uh, so many West Virginians. I understand the struggles here. You know, I, it's it for me. It's good going back and forth across the state, advocating for so many communities has been you know, has been very eye opening. You know, I understand where a lot of West Virginians are coming from. From all, all backgrounds and communities, you know, it's not just um, it's not just being you know, but being a mayor is it, it, fantastic and it's it's a great great experience. But that's just one city, you know. I, I've been to towns across the state, learning about e- each of them, and and that comes across. That's one of the benefits of being a, a, a an organizer like myself is the the lived experience that comes with it, and the experience that you get for other people um, really resonates. 
and like I said, you know, I don't have, I'm not a, uh, the, I'm not, I guess I'm not the establishment friendly candidate, <laughs> as we can all tell with the, with the, uh, with the Joe Manchin endorsement. So, you know, I mean, I'm not going to disparage uh, Mary Elliott. He seems like a very nice man. I've met a couple of times. Um, but that, that is, that really is our differences. I mean, you, it comes down to is I'm, I'm a working class candidate when it comes down to it. And uh, Don Blankenship, I think he's just trying to remain relevant in the, in the news, I'm not quite sure why he's in this race or what he plans on doing. His commercials are wild. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Miller, that's uh, that's funny. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, you may not agree uh, with with all of the people that you connect with, especially say the Republican side. But you said there are some areas where you can come together in your conversations. What are some of those areas maybe you have found where you, you can come together? I mean, a lot of it comes down to uh, economic issues, or you know, we, we, we can we, we can negotiate and debate about where money where money needs to go to. I'm I'm very big on reallocating funds and money into different areas, and I think a lot of I think a lot of more of your um, your Republican voters are open to that as well. I mean, you know, I have no problem when when if you want to say we hey we should audit these uh, government organizations or audit the government. I have no problem with that. We we should. We need to know where our money's going. Um, if you want to critique uh, where money's going overseas yeah absolutely i have no problem i have no problem critiquing that as well so i mean there's more common ground when it really when it comes down to how our money is being spent um then <clears throat> then, then people really realize that's why i say if you want to negotiate you know economics and where you know things need to be built up is always is always on the table that, that's how the, the american government functions you know now for, for, for myself i don't really i won't bend on social issues so to speak but if you and then i've been and i've been open about that um, you know, I've had I've had people come to me and say, "Hey, let's talk about this." I say, "Look, I'm not going to change my mind on this, but I'll gladly hear you out. We can talk about it." And uh, just the simple fact that they they were they were happy with the simple fact that I didn't, I didn't yell at them. I'm like, "Well, if this is how bad America is, I'm not going to yell at you for for your view. I'm just, I'm not going to agree with you, but I'll just tell you here's where I stand." Uh, but but frankly, yeah, it comes down to um, economics is where you can you know you you push and pull on. And I appreciate that's certainly something we've lost in our country right now, that ability to finish a conversation and go, you know what, we'll agree to disagree, but we can do it cordially. Uh, take us to maybe some of those social issues. When you say, look, these are some areas I'm not going to change my mind, what are some of those? Certainly. So one, well, the one, the most latest one when I was at an event, someone walked up and said, hey, I don't agree with uh, gay marriage, for instance. And I said, well, I mean, that's but that's your view. Um, I am on the opposite side of that. I think people should be able to marry who they want to marry. Um, and that, that that's how it is, and they explain how they think it's wrong. I said, look, I understand that you think it's wrong, and that that's that's your life. But you, for 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 everyone else, you can't just look at somebody else and go, hey, I think this is wrong. You can't just so you can't do it. That's not fair. You know, you can't just tell someone that that they, they can't marry someone they love because because of your relig religious belief or how you feel about it. And, and that went back and forth for for a couple of minutes, and they really and they it came down to as like, and they, they, no one had I guess really ever explained it that way to them in a calm manner, and they really they kind of told me like okay you know I, I get that yeah I wouldn't want to be told what to do in my life so I can understand that I guess you know I, it doesn't affect my life so what's it matter I say yeah, exactly it's not affecting your life so just you know let let people let people be so and then that's really kind of the message I'm, I'm kind of coming across here is like look you know I'll, I'll talk to you no matter how talk to you and hear you out i've even i've had people spit at me i said look man if you, you, like, you you can hate me in the day i'm not gonna hate you uh in the day who else is here who else is here on this porch in the coal fields trying to figure out what you need in your community you sure as hell ain't gonna be jim justice and i don't even know where Alex Mooney is <laughs> it's not gonna be don blankenship so. local attorney stephen skinner in a famous response to someone that said, I don't believe in gay marriage, said, fine, don't get gay married. That, that was his <laughs> it was a response there. Go ahead, Matt Miller. Uh, you mentioned uh, coming from the hills and hollers uh, and some of your background. Uh, how are you connecting uh, with, with those across uh, other parts of the state, including areas like right here in the eastern panhandle? I, I love the eastern panhandle when I come up there. Honestly, I've been up there about seven times. Um, the people are fantastic. I, I'm very much from more southern West Virginia, and I've been very – I'm open about that. I say I've, every event I go to, I, I learn something new about, let's say, the Eastern Panhandle. Um, you know, people have very updated me on um, uh, views on solar panels up there, for instance. Yeah, you know, that I was unaware of, and or you know, I go into um, or how uh, basically Eastern Panhandle, the economy up there, very much keeps uh, a lot of West Virginia alive, and they and they don't see the benefits of it. Yeah, you know, so I mean, it's a bit. It's, it's 
the great that's the, the greatest thing about this whole campaign is it's been a, it's always a learning experience no matter where you go. And I you know I take notes everywhere I go so I can understand um, the struggles of each part of the state and where we have we have mostly the same struggles. There are those outliers where each part is each part is different. But I love East Grand. It's a beautiful area. Hey Zach, this is John Gilstrap. Good morning. <clears throat> As a junior member of of a hundred member uh, governing body, the Senate. Uh, the bottom line is you're going to have to toe the party line on, uh, mm -hmm. or you'll be working out of the basement, right? That's that's the way the Washington politics work. So how do you overcome uh, aligning yourself with the, the Democratic Party, which at this point in time is anti-fossil fuel, it's anti-gun, it's pro-abortion? Uh, you, uh, from looking at your website here, I, uh, you'll address systemic racism by supporting reparations through community investment and that sort of oh. thing. There are a lot of, and then moving down, um, a lot of, I don't want to use socialist with a capital S, but, you know, sort of leaning that way, a lot more taxes for the wealthy and what, and what have you. Oh. It's sort of like picking winners and losers. So how do you, in a state like West Virginia, which is so deeply read historically, how do you overcome the burden of all of those sort of counter West Virginia um, uh, policies? No, I, don't, I don't see I don't see them as counter West Virginia policies. I, I like to always say this when it comes back down to 2016. I really don't I really don't believe this is a Republican held state. This is a state in desperation. You had Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump, both populists. Who ran in 2016? Bernie Sanders uh, was very popular here, but he didn't make the nomination. Trump did. So people in West Virginia went with Donald Trump because they want some. They wanted somebody who would listen to him. Um, and that, that's what it comes down to. And like I said, my messaging is very much following that more Bernie Sanders populist populist uh, messaging on there. It, it's still popular, it's, it, which is popular in West Virginia. Um, you know, p p people, uh, people. Um, I, I don't necessarily think it's a taboo to have these beliefs i think very much so people like i said it comes down to the same the same things you know people very much just want to be heard and west virginians ultimately we're never heard we're, we're always ignored um you know, and then you talk you just you touched on um uh renewable energy there for a second and then that's that's one of my biggest policy points there is but we also need to talk about how um unlike a lot of the uh democrats out of west virginia i'm very i'm very big on a justified transition i don't want one job to be lost until we have, for me, solar manufacturing jobs here. It's been a very popular pocket point I have. I've talked to the installers and manufacturers. You can build solar panels here in the coal fields. But until that until that point, I don't want to see one, one, one job lost until we can actively have miners taken care of in that. And for me, you have to get the ball rolling on that. I don't want to see West Virginia get left behind. We keep, I think we just keep kicking the can and hoping the coal industry will come back, and I don't, I don't believe they ever will. Whether it's going to be a Democrat or Republican president, the coal industry is not going to come back to me. So I'd much rather see miners um, be taken care of and in West Virginia embrace a future industry. You touched on the Second Amendment as well, like much, much like um, you know, I'm very pro Second Amendment. Um, it's actually probably one of my more of my more moderate talking points. Actually, um, I don't. You know, I'm all about background checks. I do believe we we can close a lot of the loopholes, but in it, we need to close a lot of the loopholes. Uh, in the day, I don't believe in uh, magazine restrictions or gun restrictions or what you can own. You know, I, I own I, I own rifles myself. You know, I love shooting my shoot, shooting myself. So, you know, I, I do differ in some ways. And when you want to fight, like, when you want to toe the party line, so to speak, I, that's never really been uh, my thing. I mean, of course, I probably do agree with the Democratic Party um, more often than not, but there are a lot of instances where I don't. And that really comes down to is you know you have to fight for what you, you what you truly believe. And will that make make you unpopular in the Senate? Possibly, but at the end of the day, it's all you have to build alliances. You have to be loud. You have to keep you have to keep fighting for what's right. It's not about it's not always about party. It should be about what's good for West Virginia and the nation, not about what's good for the Republican or Democrat party. I, I understand that, and, and and I think it's noble to uh, and, and I've I've lived in the D.C. area pr pretty much my whole life, and sure. and uh, and pardon my cynicism. Um, but, mis fine. but Mr. Smith really uh, got his butt kicked when he when he went to Washington, right? So it you do become part of a, an apparatchik in a, in a in a larger party, and the party movement right now is uh, the Democratic Party at the national level is uh, it, it, it's just one of those things that is not popular in in 
I don't think it's sure. popular. It's not resonating in West Virginia. If you listen to the ads for the Republican primaries that are or for the primaries that are coming up, um, all the wokeism, all of the the uh, the, the Democrat talking points are woefully mm. unpopular. And I'm just curious, how do you, as a Democrat, how do you separate yourself from those and still garner the support of the Democrats who are going to have to help you out in order to win? I mean, I've, I've, for the, for garnering the Democrats, of course, it's, it's already there. Like I said, I'm not bending on where I, where I stand. Uh, from what I've found, a lot of these, you know, the anti-woke and all the um, I'll say the Republican governor's races um, is people are very much not happy with those with those ads across the board, and it's not just Democrats. I I talk to a lot of Republicans, and people aren't happy about it. People don't don't like the messaging that uh, the, um, the Capitals and Millers and Morrisons have been throwing out about themselves. Uh, to me, it's it's honestly they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot with that messaging very heavily um, across the state. I'm sure it resonates with with a lot of people certainly, but it's, I don't think it's resonating as strongly as um as, as you're thinking it is zach, just to be honest about a minute left matt did you have a final question for zach okay otherwise zach uh, take a minute talk to our audience and tell them why they should vote for you in the democratic primary for u.s senate coming up yeah absolutely look when it comes down to it, west virginia has been ran by the company store for decades and decades with joe manchin retiring this now gives us the opportunity to put some put somebody in there that represent west virginians and understand where we all come from i'm from the working class i'm the working class candidate I do this every day. I've organized across the state. I understand where all of us are coming from, and I can fight for that. I'm not about corporate interest or, or lobbying money. I don't answer that. I answer people in West Virginia and what we need, and that's what I fight for. So if you want to put a fighter in the seat, now's the time to do it. Don't do the same old, same old, and don't do it to, don't give it to a coal baron. So visit my website at shrewsburyforsenate.com. Zach, I thank you very much for your time. I respect your background and your service in the U.S. Marine Corps. My nephew just got out about a year ago himself after – uh, seven or eight years. So thank you for your service to our country and best of luck to you in the upcoming election, sir. Hey, thank you all for having me back on. I appreciate it.